So this is 2.3 problems. So let's just look at a couple of these real quick. If we have a problem such as this, which are, these are problems from 1 through 16. Okay, if we have a problem that looks like that, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply my numerators and then multiply my denominators. In this case, I'm going to multiply... Uh, let's do the bottom first. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. And then I'm going to multiply my top numbers. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 7 is 140. And because I have one negative there, that 1 is an odd number, so my answer is negative. Okay, now let's look at a couple things here. 4 times 5 is 20, times 7 is 140. Okay, I can do that in my head, but I could not do 4 times 7 is 28, 28 times 5. I can't do that in my head. It's 140, but you're going to find the easiest way to multiply here. So in this case, it was easier to multiply this way. You could have multiplied 7 times 5, and gotten 35, and then added 35 plus 35, you know, four times, so is what I would do. Rather than do 35 times 4, I would have gone 35, double that is 70, double that is 140. So either way is fine, but uh, just pick the numbers that are easiest to multiply, and then uh, do as much of it as you can in your head. But this is a key thing. One negative here, an odd number of negatives, so your answer is going to be negative. And you've done enough that are like 17 to 20 that I think you should be okay with, with doing those. Um, <clears throat> when you've got numbers like 21 to 30, in fact, let's pick number, uh, let's pick number 30. 32 over 27 times 72 over 49 times 1 over 40. Now you can get your calculator out and multiply all that out, but you're going to end up with just a really big number, and then you're going to have to figure out how to reduce it. I would like you to try doing these without a calculator. So 32 we're going to write as a product of primes. So let's go ahead and write 32. 2, 16, 2, 8, 2, 4, 2, 2. Okay, so I have five twos over 27, which is 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 72 is, let's go ahead and do our... Uh, product of primes with 72 here. Alright, 72, we're going to break that down into 2 and 36, 2 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 3. So, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 1, and let's go ahead and look at my denominators here. And what I'm, gonna, I'm doing is I'm doing some, some work first to get myself ready so that I can just cancel eventually. Okay, 40 is going to reduce to 2 times 2 times 4 times 5 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, times 5 is 40. Alright, so now I've done my busy work, my hard stuff. Now it makes it easy as I can just start canceling. So I have two 3's up here and two 3's down here. I have 1, 2, 3, 2's. 1, 2, 3, 2's. Is there anything else there that I can cancel? doesn't look like it. So I've got 32 over 7 times 7 is 49 and then 49 times 3 so see how you just kinda have to do some work once in a while so 
So 32 over 147. Looks like that's as small as we can go. Okay, I'm looking at number 44. And this one looks a little bit tricky, but if we just kind of keep things into perspective and do one little step at a time, we'll find that it's not so bad. So we're going to take two-thirds and square it. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Okay. Don't multiply two times two is four, and then three times two is nine. It's three times three. And we're going to multiply that by nine, and I'm going to make that a fraction just so that they all look the same. And then one-half squared would be one over 4. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. And I'm going to multiply that by 4 and I'm going to put that over 1. Okay, so remember when you have the multiplication sign here, you can cancel across, but the plus sign you can't. So what I'm going to do is I've got a 9 there and a 9 there, so I'm going to cross those two out. And in the other set, these are multiplied. I've got a 4 and a 4, so I'm going to cross those out. And what do I have left? 4 over 1. Okay, I can't cross this line. I've got to just stay and do this multiplication and this multiplication. Now I can worry about adding those two together. So, when you're adding these two together, um, you've got to make sure you have common denominators. And do I? Yes, I have 4 over 1 plus 1 over 1, and that equals 5. 5 over 1, or just 5. Okay. Now, if you look at one like uh, number 48, that one looks a little bit trickier. There's a lot more to that one. It says, what is 3 fifths of the sum of 8 and 7? Okay. What is? Is, just like I said before, of usually stands for a multiplication. Is usually stands for an equal sign. And what is what you're looking for. So I'm going to put a question mark there for my what. What is three-fifths of the sum of eight and seven? Okay, so I'm going to put those in parentheses because I'm going to add 8 and 7, and then I'm going to take 3 fifths of that. Notice the other of after the word sum. Um, a sum is the answer to a plus problem or an addition problem. So that sum of does not mean multiply. But when you have a number like 3 fifths of, then it is a multiplication there. So, okay, so we have our question mark. We have 3 fifths times 8 and 7 is 15. And we'll change that to 15 over 1. And we have 3 fifths times. We'll go ahead and do a product of primes here. And then I can cross this 5 with this 5 and get 9. So 3 fifths of 15 is going to be 9. And let's do just a couple. Find the area of a triangle. Let's look at one like uh, number 60. It's got a base. It's telling me I have a base of 13. And it says I have a height of 8. We don't care what the triangle looks like. But that's all we're concerned with. And we know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So area equals 1 half. The base on this is 13. The height is 8. Remember what I said before? If one of these numbers is even, just take half of it, multiply it by the other one, and you're done. So area equals 4 times 13, because we took one half of 8 and got 4. And then 4 th times 13 is really easy to do, and you get 52. Okay. Now, when they give you one like number 62, and they're dealing with fractions there and making your life a little bit more miserable, they're saying that the base is 8 sevenths, and the height is 14 over 5. So that's our 
triangle. Area equals one half base times height. Okay, now remember, well, let's go ahead and write this out here. One half base times height. All right, remember, whenever you're taking half of a fraction, you just double the denominator. So you pick which of these two fractions you want to double the denominator. Doesn't really matter. I guess I would probably do this one. No real reason, but let's go ahead and do that. So 8 sevenths will stay the same. We're going to double the denominator. There we go. So that's what my area is. So now I have to either multiply that, but... Let's go ahead and finish it up here. I'm going to make a product of primes. 2 times 2 times 2. That's my 8 over 7 times 2 times 7 over 10 is going to be 2 times 5. And see what I can cancel. That just keeps me from having to multiply so many big numbers. So then I multiply my top and I get 8. And the only thing that's left on my bottom is 5. And I have found the area of that triangle, 8 over 5. All right, so you should be okay for doing the rest of the problems in 2.3.